Wow. Uh, okay. Um, I need everybody to do me a favor. Jump online uh, pretty quickly uh, and head to our. Uh, head to our uh, website. I just want to point out a couple things for you uh, that you, uh, some of it we're going to use tonight. So there was a lot of reading. I doubt seriously that most of you got through a lot of this stuff, um, but it's certainly something that you should be getting through before the end of the semester. This will help you out in a huge way in terms of getting ready to be out there. Um, so things about your portfolio, about online marketing, about all that kind of stuff. We're going to go through some of this tonight. Uh, sort of be the last class. Try to bring this back around full blown to the beginning of where this class began. Um, <clears throat> we pretty much finished doing most, if not all, of the assignment 4.1 in class last week, um, but we pretty much took it also to the very end of class. Were there any questions about that stuff? Are you guys feeling better about going through all of that part? Um, I did get a chance, I, I haven't graded these yet because they weren't were technically due until tonight. So even though I think a lot of you had already turned stuff in last week, I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to jump the gun on that. Um, but I did look through the estimates that you had done from the week before, the one that you did for yourself, and all that. And by and large, most of you seem to be really getting this whole idea of how explicit you need to be in this stuff. The um, the whole idea that you have to do serious job description, that usage becomes a real player in all of this. Um, I would um, strongly suggest that, and again, it was it was your first time out, or in many cases, some cases, the first time out um, doing this kind of stuff. But again, I would suggest um, um, working through this possibly a little bit more, just so that you can. So, for instance, there were a lot of people who were actually using the Plus system to generate their licenses, uh, but then they would simply copy that whole thing or do screenshots of that whole uh, thing and include that in their form. There's got to be a way that you can present that that's a little bit more appealing than that just really cut and dried, cut and paste, kind of like, you know, I, I don't have the answer to what that really is. I'm just throwing that one out there to you guys. I would uh, actually um, spend a little time trying to work that part out. Uh, Daniel. Yeah. Right. Oh, it is okay to use a list for that because in some ways it just makes it simpler. Um, there's a lot of people that would argue you're better to do it in list form because putting it in conversational English, you can imply things that you didn't mean to imply. They can read things into it that you didn't mean to have them read into it. So by doing it just in a list form, there's very little that they can embellish that with. You know, if you have two rolls of seamless, four models, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a, a lion, um, you know, whatever, then again, there's less, less open to interpretation than, you know, if you were saying, oh yeah, I'm going to work with uh, two models and a lion, and they think, oh, a lion is, you know, some of the, whatever, I'm just saying, it just, it sort of like spells it out a little bit easier, so I don't have an objection to that part of it. Um, again, I would just try to clean stuff up. It's the reason that I use that macro in uh, um, uh, uh, Excel to cull all the important information out of that spreadsheet so that you don't just have a whole list of blank things that don't mean anything to the job that you're doing. Uh, it just seems to be cleaner. And so this is a time right now before you guys are actually needing to do this, but getting ready to need to do this to work those sort of glitches out. Um, and also, I'm still going to be here for the next 10 weeks at least. So um, it's clearly if there's something that you guys want to get together and talk about, um, uh, I, we can get together in office hours, we can get together outside of class. If there's, oh yeah, I think I'd like to try to do this, do you have any idea, whatever, it just gives us time to do that. What you really want to include in that is the scope of the job. It's not any, it doesn't have anything to do with the usage at all. It's got nothing to do with websites and, and print and two times North American rights. And it's got nothing to do with that. It's as an explicit a description of the job as you can get. Because the, the problem that you can run into with this stuff is what happens when you, you bid a job and you put it out there and it just says, I'm going to do uh, uh, 28, 28 shots uh, on Seamless in the studio. And they accept your bid, and it comes time to actually do the shooting. And you go into the studio, and you've got one seamless background. And they say, well, we want four. 
And you'll say, well, I didn't bid for four. And they say, well, that's not my problem. That's what we want. And so it's that kind of thing. It's that sort of really explicit language about how much it is, how many times, where it is, as much as you can sort of really describe about the shooting. Because that way they cannot come back to you and say, well, you know, if they said to you, for instance, you specified there was four seamless backgrounds in your bid. And they came back and said, well, we want two more backgrounds. We want six total. You, and you could just, then you're very justified in saying to them, well, I bid four. You can see it's right here in my description. So if you'd like me to rebid this and add those two extra ones in there, I'll be happy to do that for you. But it's <coughs> avoiding them being able to hang that stuff on you. Make sense? Yeah. Um, that's, again, why if you look through, actually, this will go back into week three, I think, possibly week two. No, it's actually week three right here. It's this ASMP change order form. That would be something else if you actually are in the middle of a job and they decide at that point, oh, we want to add another model. Oh, we want to, we want the lion. Uh, or, uh, oh, we want two more backgrounds or whatever. Then you could, this is an amendment to your estimate. This is them actually explicitly saying they want to change the parameters of your estimate. And you get to say, okay, you want the lion that's going to be $500 for the lion and $1,000 for his trainer. And you don't have to rewrite the whole estimate. You actually just go through the whole change form. I mean, you can see what it is. It's, again, all these forms are sort of variations on the same theme. Uh, but this one. So it's a change order form, and so here it is, a changing, and it's saying the job number, and then again, you go through the whole description. You just And the thing about these, this is just copy-paste from your original um, uh, estimate anyway, uh, but it's the description of the changes right here. This is what, and the additional fees and the additional expenses, and they would have to sign off on this, or you don't do it. So that that way, again, it's documented that they wanted this done, they agreed to do it, they agreed to the extra fee and the extra money to do it, and you're covered. That's really what this is all about. So I think a logical question that you guys would ask me is that do I do this with every single client that I work with? And the truth of it is, no, I don't. There's a lot of clients that don't do anything, uh, any of this stuff. But there's clients that I've been working with for almost 20 years now. Um, and we've got a really good, solid relationship. And we do very, very, very little in writing. So is that a good thing or a bad thing for me? Uh, I haven't been burned with that yet. But... But I would never go into a relationship with a new client and not do that. The other thing I also would never do with a new client is this. So it's the two places that you guys need to think about going to all the time, although the Yahoo one may be going now. We're, I don't know. We're going to find out right now. But uh, three places that you can go to. You get a brand new client. Everybody just do this with me really quickly because once you get there, you can bookmark these uh, websites. Um, so uh, the first one I'm going to do is uh, Dun and Bradstreet. So new, D U N N, and my, do you, does it seem like your browsers are just getting slower all the time? I have not had a, a search except the first word in a year because I've already it hasn't loaded by the time I type it. All right, uh, D U N N and Bradstreet. Um, uh, this is where you would actually go, again, when you've got a brand new cl uh, client that's actually uh, somebody who wants to book you for something, the first one of the first places, I do three places, I, this is one of them I go to, because this will check their credit worthiness. So if there's a problem with them, it will get flagged here on Dun & Bradstreet, uh, one of the places to go. The next place to go to is the Better Business Service Bureau, so BBSB, I think. Or that'll give you the Behavioral and Biomedical Sciences building. No. Uh, so Better Business Bureau, just try that. Better Business Bureau, this would be the next place to actually go, so just to BBB. Um, this uh, tends to be... Um, uh, 
Uh, yeah, this would be another place that you could actually type in, uh, again, and this would be a little bit more localized, but you can type in the name of the company that's trying to hire you, and you do a quick search on them, and they will talk about everything. So this is not just a credit site, although they will report your credit stuff, but this is also a place where if anybody's filed any legal complaints against this company, so if there's liens or lawsuits or anything else out against them, so for instance, maybe there's a whole string of photographers who've worked for this company that you're getting ready to work for that are all suing for payment well then you would know does that mean you don't work for them say what so Peyton would not work for them anybody else you do a credit check on somebody or a BBB on somebody whatever and there's a list of 30 photographers that are all suing them to get paid do you work for them bingo right answer if you can get the money up front that's exactly what you do you say yes I'll be thrilled to work for you I need a hundred percent advance of expenses and fees and I will be thrilled to work for you. Beat a path to your door. Good answer. Okay. And then the last place, um, in some ways, is is uh, is one of the best. But again, Yahoo's been having issues. Uh, but you want to go to Yahoo Business. Oh, uh, finance. Sorry, Yahoo Finance. And again, you would put in the name of your company here, specific, it'll do a specific search for this, uh, within this um, um, within this site. Um, and they have every news story that would actually be uh, anything about the company that you're actually working for. So unlike trying to read the financial reports of a Dun & Bradstreet or the Better Business Bureau or whatever, this would be news stories that have been pulled out of Wall Street Journal or the Chicago Tribune or, or um, uh, Crane's Business Chicago or that kind of stuff, whatever. So um, it's just three good places to go to to get a sense of what sort of shape the people who are asking you to work with are in. Um, so uh, again, and I would do this religiously. What I can also tell you is that a uh, company that I work for quite a bit just declared bankruptcy two weeks ago, um, but we had been following the we had been following the lead up to this since well it's been for almost a year, so we've been tracking these stories and trying to guess. Everybody had a pretty good idea they were going to do it, but we were all trying to time when, so um, I got burned. But we'll see. Who knows if it's going to be forever. We'll see. You know, I got burned, but I also made an absolute fortune off these people. So relative to that speaking. But does that make me sound like, okay, I, uh, this always cracks me up. I don't gamble, really. I've only been to Las Vegas once. Um, and there was a guy, I, 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 I say I don't gamble. I took my $20 and went down one night. And, and I, it, I was at playing craps, and I lasted for an hour or so, whatever. And there was a guy who was playing at the same table I was, and he was um, – uh, he was like, uh, he was making a lot of money. He was losing a lot of money, making a lot of money and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I run into this guy a week later. We were, we're, we were both leaving, checking out at the same time. I'd been there with a friend's friend. Anyway, uh, um, that sounds so misleading. Anyway, um, <laughs> and I walked out and, the, and I saw the guy and I was like, so how did you do? And he goes, oh, I lost my $5,000, but it was a great vacation. I just, I just treated it as a $5,000 vacation. And then, like, in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, you are trying to justify this, and, and I am not buying that at all, right? But at any rate, so, um, yeah, so anyway, I don't want to come up sounding like that. Okay, so that being said, what I would like to do is, um, tonight I want to deal with issues. Um, so anyway, one last final question I'm just going to ask out here. So, for, are there any other questions about sort of the more the mechanical stuff, the, the money stuff that we've uh, actually covered in this class. Are you guys feeling better about that somewhat? Do you feel some rough idea about where you kind of are in the scheme of things? And Daniel? Okay. And well, no, that's great because the one thing we didn't talk about, we, did, uh, we briefly touched on getting in advance in the very beginning of this, but once we did all the estimating forms that we were looking at the other day, we didn't. So if you guys still have your bid from uh, last week, I'm fairly certain that I've still got mine. Let's take a quick look at it uh, and see how it is that, uh, or the way that I would look at um, and uh, what I would ask for in terms of an estimate for this guy. So if I take a look at the uh, version that actually got 
um, uh, pulled out here. So this was the Engelhardt Studio part, whatever. Uh, this was the description of the assignment. This was, and again, this was the money that we were actually looking for here. Um, and go down here to the bottom part. And again, I hadn't put in notes yet. But basically what I'm looking for is $159,994. So the biggest possible investment. So you have a number of options to get an advance on this. You could go, we'll go from, we'll go from worst to best. So the worst version in this would be half of the estimate. So half of the estimate, let's just round this, let's just say for all practical purposes, this is $160,000. It just makes the uh, calculating it easier, and, it, and we're only $6 away from that anyway. Um, so uh, half of that would be $80,000 advance. That's what you would request on this. That's not what I would request on this. Um, uh, and now again, a lot of these things you may not be carrying, which would be fine. So for instance, if the client is gonna pick up the, uh, the uh, model fees right here, that's $50,000 that you can pull off of this guy in terms of your advance request, right? So instead of it being $160,000, it's now $107,000 because the models are being paid for directly by the client or the, the models would bill directly to the client. Does that make sense to you guys? So even though you're putting in the estimate for this part in terms of the money that's really coming to you, what I would probably do if that was the case is down here where I'd have total estimate, then underneath this I would probably put something like um, uh, less, uh, uh, less expenses bill direct. And then typically in invoicing structure, negatives are um, uh, denoted uh, by using parentheses. So let's say that we were, let's say that you were going to pick up everything except for the model fees. So the less expenses part, uh, 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 billed directly to the client under here, um, I would probably then, let's do less model fees. Um, build direct to client. So then again over here in parentheses you would put in this model fee number. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. And then uh, um, I want to phrase this. And then again, whatever that would be, so it would be 107, 894. So for advance due, again, you could do half of that, which would be $53,500, something like that, close to that. That would be the cheapest that you could do, the least amount of money that you would be asking for. I would never do that. Um, I would probably go to um, either the medium one, which is all expenses. So again, all expenses would be everything except for your photography fee. So it would be this 107 minus your one set, your 1750. So again, that would put the estimate closer to $90,000. Or finally, the Hail Mary of them all, I would do all the expenses plus half of your fee. So in that case, half of your fee would be um, uh, roughly $9,000. So this would be, so it would be a $98,000 advance, basically what you would request. Uh, and you would try to get that money up front. Always. Again, I've told you this. I told you this when we were looking at those strategies before. It is always easier to get money before you do the job than it is afterwards. Daniel. Usually what I'll request in all of this, um, and again, we talked about this briefly, is I will look for them to um, sign this estimate. I will look to get that back from them. I will also ask them for a PO, a purchase order, and the advance, all three of them. Now, usually in most cases, they're not going to have a check uh, for you the next day, but you'd be surprised. They can get really motivated, but usually it has to go through accounting. But more often than not, it'll show up as a check. If you want to give them routing information, there's people who will now do electronic transfers. So you can, however they want to handle it, uh, and whatever way would be the fastest is the way you want it to happen. 
It does. No way. Run that by me again. Oh, how do all, how does all this happen? Well, if you take a look at most of this, most of this is uh, very little of this is anything but arrangements. It's talent. That's basically what's going on here. You're arranging for catering. You're arranging for your crew. You're arranging for all of that. A large part of that's put together by your production coordinator, unless you have decided you're going to do your own production coordinating. But that's how, Tyler. Yes, usually I hire the production coordinator. They will talk to the client. Rarely, it used to be that we would get a lot of say in model picks. We don't anymore. That's all client based now. But they would definitely want to know who I want to work with. They would want to know my assistants, my digital techs, who I like for hair and makeup, who I like for styling. They'll want to know all of that information. They may want to go with people that, of their own. Um, but otherwise, it would um, uh, they would go to me. They would defer to me. Now, there's also a lot of companies that take all of this on on their own. So for the most of the clients that I work for would never ask me to bid this stuff out. They would never want me to tell them what model fees are going to be or any of that kind of stuff. All they want to know is what my rate's going to be to do the job. They take the production in-house. And the reason that they're doing all of this is that it's cheaper for them to hire a $45,000 a year producer who works on every job that they have than to pay me the hit that they are going to take because I mark everything up. All right? So they know they're getting it as cheap a rate as they can possibly get it. Um, and then they just have a staff person who does it over and over and over again. Exactly. No, but again, it would, it would still, description of the job, usage, would spell all of that out. What we didn't talk about this, and I want to show it to you, we'll look at that really quick too. If you open up the um, uh, Excel spreadsheet for this guy as well, so you remember... Um, you remember when we actually went through this whole thing <clears throat> that this was for the parameters of this job was for a, essentially one usage. It was a one-time fee, right? It was one-time print, North American only. That was it. But let's say that they came back to me now and said, and we also want to use this for web. Well, if they were going to do that for web, typically you could come up here to the top for your photo fee, and instead of it being five days, because this is a per day rate on this one, I would actually change this to go equal five times two, because I've just doubled the usage on this. So now it's $35,000 instead of $17,500. However, does that look like a gouge kind of number? Yeah, Elizabeth is like, fuck you, I'm never paying you that kind of money. There's no way, I don't care, right? So instead what you would do is take this back to the way it was in that five, and then put down here, again, I've run out of places to actually add stuff down here um, uh, um, because I've used up all of my other spaces down here. Um, but I would take something down here. What I would probably do is work my assistant back up into the $1,500. So my second, uh, the, my, this assistant is $1,500 for this job. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to go up to my original assistant up here. So this guy, yeah, was seven days at 350. So I'm going to put uh, change this again. If you don't know spreadsheet work in here, you could just change this in the um, Word document and redo the math on a calculator. Uh, but I'm going to hit one here and come over to this frame. And again, I would hit um, uh, equals open parentheses seven times 350. Close parentheses plus open parentheses. 5 times 300, that's what the second assistant was, close parentheses. That puts all of my assistant fees into one slot, and then I can open up this one down here, and this one down here would be, instead of second assistant, this would be second, ironically, uh, uh, second uh, media usage. And then again, it would be that 5 days, oh, that would not be capitalized like that, sorry. And five days at 3500 a day, because that's exactly what it is. Again, it would be based on my same rate. And then again, when you take a look at it now, so I upgraded to Excel, and it won't open any longer. It won't open up my macro sheets. So...
The way that the spreadsheet was originally designed, because I designed it, um, is um, when you open the first spreadsheet, it actually calls to the second one and opens them both at the same time. But working in this version of Excel, that doesn't work. Right. Right. You just open them both. Oh, to put the macro in the same folder? Yeah, and then open them both at the same time. Got it, got it, got it. I'm just wondering why this isn't going to open just my invoice calculator, though. So that's my invoice guy, but again, it should have opened the macro guy as well, and it hasn't. So at any rate. All right, so then hopefully, yeah, it works right here. And so then this comes back, and you'll see that in this case right here, I still kept my photo free at 17,500, uh, 17, but I've got a second media usage under here at 17,500. It just optically looks better, but the same amount of money is there. And then again, if I was going to do a third media usage or a second year or something like that, I would list that separately as well. And then again, we talked about this before. By the time you start getting into that three and four area of usages, um, people start talking about unlimited buyout. And at that stage of the game, why not? You know, if they wanted to give me uh, 54, uh, 51000 you know, $53,000 to spend five days in Florida shooting, I would probably say yes. Does that make me seem like I'm whoring out? No. Okay. Uh, are there questions about this? The rest of this. Say what? <laughs> yep. I'll, I, I can be happy to look at your stuff. Okay, uh, so I'm going to quit out of this guy right here. I'm not going to save that part. So that gets us through this part. So what I would like to do now, or spend at least the rest of the of um, of our time here talking about this stuff, are things that are more directly related to you, your business. A um, couple of things that I want to touch on. Actually, a lot of things that I want to touch on. So it's going to be sort of a um, kind of more of a. Well, I've got some. Well, anyway, let's just do it. You know, it's like that whole news thing. Doesn't that drive you nuts if they tell you what they're going to tell you? You know, so exactly right. So tonight we're going to talk about branding. Well, just talk about it. Um, okay, so tonight we are going to talk about branding. That's what, that's going to where we're going to talk about a lot of things tonight. I know uh, Tyler in one of the first classes that we were in, you were asking me about search engine optimization. We're going to get on. We, we will get to that tonight as well. So there are other things. We're going to talk about portfolios. We're going to talk about website design. We're going to talk about a lot of those things. Speaking of that, really quickly, are there any coders in here? Is there anybody in here who actually writes HTML code? A little bit of it. Okay, well, so part of this will relate to, um, Gabby, if you're a full-blown coder, then people may be tracking you down. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the things that deal with that. There are a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the effective parts, well, not some of the effective parts about doing search engine optimization uh, are behind the scenes. It's actually stuff that's in code. So um, it's just something that we'll talk about, um, and I'll show you some stuff, um, show you enough to probably break your website. Uh, is there anybody in this room who does not have a website yet? Okay. Uh, does that mean, are those things in the works? Are we thinking about? Okay. Okay. Well, we should talk about that kind of thing as well and sort of the mechanics of all that and how you really do want to do that or not. Um, I, I know a lot of, how many people here are doing Squarespace or something equivalent to Squarespace? Okay, yeah, Squarespace is, is what can you tell, what does it cost to do a year of Squarespace? $120. $120, so they're charging you $10 a month. Um, does that have anything to do with the level that you're at? Is that a student discount or just, it, it doesn't matter? It's like 20 pages. Okay, so you get 20 pages. 
So <laughs> you, and if you yeah. exceed that, then you have to have like a bigger plan. Okay. okay. There's a discount for the first year. Like I feel like my first year was cheaper than it. Okay. And then when you do it, do they actually help you design stuff, or do you just look at templates and you There's pick one? Okay, I was going to say, you mean if you want to update your work, they're not easy to change? Yeah. Exactly. What about actually going in and screwing around with the code? Can you add keywords, for instance, to your website? Do you know? Yeah. You can? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You mean 169 a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you get unlimited pages. Okay, all right. Well, we'll talk about that stuff a little bit later. I just didn't know how open they were, how locked down they were. But, I'm sorry? Okay. All right, well, then we can take a look at some of that stuff. I'll show you it in mine uh, at any rate. Okay, so with that being said, what I would like to do tonight, and I'm going to give everybody like five minutes to think about this. Um, there's going to be a lot of things to write down tonight, so you should grab a hunk of paper and a pencil and did the list get around? Did the sign-in sheet yes. make it around? Good. Great. Because I'm going to do mine as well. So some of this stuff you're going to want to write down. Some of the stuff you don't have to write down. But there is an exercise that we're going to do tonight where I am going to ask you to write a number of things down. Um, so what I would like to do, just spend the next, because uh, I don't want, I want to give everybody just a quick second to think about this, so a couple minutes to think about this, but I want to know, I want you to tell me what your brand is. That's all I want. Okay, so, and simple. So keep this simple. Again, we had talked briefly about this in the very beginning of this class, what was your elevator pitch, that kind of stuff. That should address issues that are a part of your brand, but if you don't know what your brand is, if you don't feel like you're comfortable in articulating that, just say that. Um, hopefully we will change that and give you a much better idea before the end of the class of what that really is all about. Does that sort of make sense? All right, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. You want it to be the brand you use for most. What do you want it to be or what it is now? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me. No, no, that's a great question. That's a great question. So in answer to that, a better, maybe possibly a better answer to that is, and it's going to be part of the exercise that we do tonight. When you talk about your brand, your brand can be aspirational, which means it may be not where you are right now, but clearly where you want to go. Okay, so I would do that. And then I know that also there are people in here who are doing multiple disciplines. You, um, uh, I don't want you to confuse those disciplines. So I would either treat that as two separate brands. That's how I would treat it. Uh, you only need to articulate one to me. <laughs> it just sort of a statement about you, your photography. This whole first part of tonight is going to be about helping you develop exactly this. So I started out just to get some idea of who feels like they know what their brand is, and if you can articulate it to me. And if not, then all the more reason that we're going to go through all of these uh, sort of like work throughs. And at the end of that, hopefully you will be able to articulate to me what your brand is. So that's really kind of a, a, a where we're at right now. So don't overthink this here in the beginning, because hopefully things are going to um, uh, uh, at least evolve, if not completely change.
Your branding should certainly be in your elevator pitch. Is maybe a better way of thinking about it. Again, let's not overthink this. Let's just let's go ahead. We're we're good enough where you're at right now. So you can give me what you got because again, I'm hoping that tonight we're really going to be able to focus in and articulate this. So I don't want to spend a, an enormous amount of time at this stage of the game right now because I really hope that this is going to um, um, uh, change as we go on. So. Let's just start and go around the room really quick. We'll start with Jared. <laughs> uh, can, so just tell me what your brand is. My brand is clean, bright, colonial fashion design. Okay, great. Carly? Hey, mine's bright, colonial fashion design and clean policy and communication. Okay, great. Savannah? Uh, mine is clean, radiant fashion design. Okay, Joe? That's fine, that's fine. That's okay, Peyton? Okay. <laughs> yeah, what's interesting about that though is there's so much like going on in there that I may none of it may appeal to me at all, but I want to know more. <laughs> you know, don't you? Yeah, there's something I think there's something to be actually said for that, right? It's like, you know, if, anyway, I just I, again at that stage of the game, I would be like, I have got to see your website. Because I don't know. Yeah, okay, well, we'll get there, right? Uh, Tyler. Okay, great. Kiana. Say what? Yep, I can skip you, Elizabeth. Okay, that's fine. So, okay, that's fine. Aaron, okay. E. <laughs> Raw, passionate, and loyal. That starts to get to be kind of interesting. Gabby. Uh, policy and best expert practice and best practice photography that is visually extraordinary beyond the usual approach and empowering brightness and sexy. Okay. Again, another. No. Again, there's something, there's enough um, catchwords in there, there's enough uh, twists and turns in there. That I think that that starts to become intriguing, and so at any rate, we'll but we're going to continue this. We'll see, we'll we'll see where these land. Like I say at the end of all of this. So Tony, uh, I make weird art interior images. Okay, Daniel. Okay, Heather. Okay, Lothorian. That's okay. Uh, commercial product photographer um, has a background and experience that only less than one percent of the American population has. Interesting. Again, um, I think I have a clue what that might be. Okay. Not really sure, but the idea that you put some sort of hook in there, um, uh, I sort of I like that part of it again because it invites, it starts to open up a, con uh, it, it invites a conversation or it's thorough, it, it it plants us something of okay, well, what's the one percent? So what is the one percent? Uh, military veteran. That's what I thought. Animal that's that, no, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. But I just I love the fact that it that that's how you necessarily phrased it. So at any rate, okay, at any rate, all right. So I'm going to give you guys a quick list here about what a brand really should sort of be about. So um, the first is, and uh, not a lot of this got included into what you guys were actually uh, referring to, but it's an experience. So a brand is that what do you really offer? If I hire you as a photographer, what is that going to be like for me? Is that going to be exciting? Is that going to be? Um, are you like like really buttoned down? Are you the are you the the? Er, can uh, every, uh, does, uh, do you, all you guys know who Irving Penn is? Does anybody not know who Irving Penn is? So just by looking at his work, you you you've got to imagine going into his studio that it's immaculately clean, it's probably very sparse. I mean, isn't that the image that you sort of like have about that, right? So 
don't you think that your experience is going to reflect exactly that same thing as well? You know, everything is going to be perfect. Everything's going to be in its place. You're not going to, you know, there isn't going to be like, you know, chaotic and insane or that. So at any rate, experience is something that you need to, I think, think about when you're talking about your branding. Uh, what do you really believe in? Your belief has a huge amount to do with this. Your convictions, your morality, your all of those things play into your brand. So you guys already know probably more about me than I should have let on, but uh, that's okay. No, the thing is that that what I do truly believe in is that um, it's the... I think I've told a number of you guys that I lie for a living. That's what I, that's what I think photography really is. Um, however, I've never, ever, ever lied to anybody at this school. I don't lie to you guys. I lie to everybody else. <laughs> but I see it for better or for worse is my job in part is to help you learn to be as an effective liar as I am so that you lie to everybody else. Just saying. Uh, all right. So, but again, what you believe in, what can you really deliver? You know, and it's not just don't think just about the work. It's the experience. A lot of it is the experience. You know, do you deliver just this incredibly um, uh, inspiring experience? Uh, you know, as a day with as a day with Gabby, just oh man, what a mind fuck that was. It was just you couldn't believe the stuff she was doing. It was just insane. You know, is that my the experience from it? Is that what she can deliver? That those sort of things. Um, Again, what everybody did in large part were was describe the traits about their work. So there was a lot of clean and a lot of of of, of moody and and that kind of stuff. So those are the those are the things where most people initially go to. But that's not enough. I don't want you to. I don't want you just to dwell on that part. And then finally, the part that and again, I don't know, Tom, if this is exactly what you're talking about, but I know this does come into play here, is you need to incorporate into your brand the people that you want to work for. So if Vogue is really who you are trying to work for, that's got to be a part of that message that goes inside of your branding. If Vogue isn't, so just because you're a fashion shooter doesn't mean you want to shoot for Vogue. Maybe you hate Vogue and uh, you really are much, much, much more into doing something that is a lot edgier, that's a lot more off the radar, that would be, you know, uh, that had, would have nothing to do with Vogue. That, that's, that's not the kind of fashion you want to do. So it's those things that you need to consider as well in terms of like putting that part in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yes. So along with that kind of branding and incorporating the people you want to work for. Yes. So should you incorporate their products and work? So say I'm like working with Bonnie Prince Kitchen. I want to get hired by Apple. Should I shoot Apple products enough to possibly you know present to them to get hired? By oh, absolutely. That's exactly what I would be doing. Yes. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the portfolio part of this. Um, but yeah, that would actually be. Uh, Yes, that would be a great way of putting it or thinking about it. Okay, so this is what I need everybody to do. I need you to take a sheet of paper just like this. And let me grab a pencil really quick. Um, I'm going to move this. You're, uh, you'll still hear the recording part of this, but you won't. They're not, there's not going to be a whole lot of changes on screen. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff on the whiteboard, so... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to turn. I got to really hope I'm not going to fuck this up. Do you think I can get that whiteboard up here? Oh, yeah, totally. All right. So hang on one second. Let me wheel this guy up here. I think it makes it easier. Everybody's going to be turning around anyway. Oh. <laughs> I don't know this okay. way. <laughs> like, what if they got back to the Spanish? All right, now we'll park it in there. <laughs> Boom. See? <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. So, on the top of your piece of paper, you're going to make a list of a series of words for me. So the one that I want to start here, the first one we're going to start is what I'm going to call core and underlying values. And I'm going to tell you what those are. So in core and underlying values, these are the things that everyone in your profession needs to have in order to succeed. So as photographers, clearly, lighting is going to become an issue in this. Uh, you know, there's the, there are basic, basic things like that. If you're a freelancer, <clears throat> one of the core underlying values you're going to need is self-motivation because if you can't get your ass out of bed, you're going to be in big trouble. So self-motivation would be something that would actually come in here. Um, uh, um, if you are not a person who deals well with people, or if let's say you are somebody who works really, really well with people, that would be a, a skill that you would actually want to uh, have here in this core value part if you're going to be a fashion shooter. If you're going to be a tabletop person, you don't need that, right? So again, <laughs> I saw that over there, Heather. Uh, okay, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, so again, what are attributes do you need to have uh, to succeed in the market and doing the type of photography that you're doing today? What I want you to do is write down five or six words or very, very short phrases. Don't make this long. So I just need you to do a quick set of those words. And I'm going to tell you what mine are really quickly just to give you some sort of idea. Um, mine were self-motivated, good ability to uh, uh, recognize trend and copy it, uh, good time management, good people skills, uh, I'm a conversationalist, uh, great lighting skills, uh, complete com command of my medium, uh, and extensive experience because I've been doing it for a while. So those were my core value parts right there. The extensive experience part may actually not belong in this stage of the game, but I put it in there anyway. So again, give me those five or six words of that, and I'll give you time to do that. Also, I need everybody to go on the website really quickly. You will see this on the video, but do me a favor. If you can get online really fast, I've got something on there to help you out in this regard. <clears throat> so if you take a look at our website, go to the um, uh, this week, week the fifth session for our class. Let me get mine up really quickly. There's two things to look at. If you go down to the bottom, um, again, to our, for this week, there is a PDF that's got adjectives describing people and personality qualities list. If you open this thing up, I'm going to open it up in a new link, <clears throat> you will see that it's got a pretty exhaustive list of things that you could use to help build this out. So I don't necessarily... There, and, but is, what's funny is that... This list includes, when you start going through it, it's like there's a whole lot more negative attributes that you can give to people than there are good ones. Let's see. I'm absent-minded. I am... Uh, so, no, it's just... You know, I'm, at any rate, um, I'm not necessarily sure that, that there are things in this specific list that will actually help you. I'm demonic, yeah. Um, uh, there you go. Okay. But, no, the thing about this is, is that a lot of times when you're trying to come up with this sort of articulation, it helps to have a list like this that you can look through. The other thing I want you to look at really quickly, and it's where I actually got this list, is there is a link underneath that that's the vocabulary word lists. If you go to that, you'll see that the adjectives that I basically just copied and made a PDF out of this. But if you scroll down underneath that, there's a whole series of word lists here that you can click on and go to. So, for instance, we were just we're looking at the adjectives right now, but there's a list for adverbs. So if you go to the list of adverbs, you will pick up other things that will actually possibly help you out uh, 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 in all of this. You know, so... Things like agreeability or, or blissfulness or, or bewildering or whatever. Again, to help you come up with the language um, uh, that you actually might want to use to 
fill out these lists that I'm actually asking you to do. There's another one for emotions and feelings. I looked at a, a number of these today. Um, there's ones for uh, nouns that are verbs. Um, there's ones for positive words, happy synonyms, um, those kind of things. This just is a place that it actually helps, might help you actually do this uh, exercise a little bit more. So has everybody got that part down, those five or six word phrases? Okay, so that goes under one heading. Under the next heading, so I want those words under there. Under the next heading, I want you to put down tone and expression. And what tone and expression has to deal with here is how you present yourself. Now, this is more of an external thing. This is not an internal thing. This is an external thing. So, do you see yourself... Well, for, for instance, I mean, the, the, the image that you guys have of me, that you have known me ever since that any of you have known me, whatever, has been black t-shirt, jeans, and converse. I mean, that is how, and that is clearly a look that I cultivate, and it's, it's, it's practiced. It's not by mistake. This is who I am when I'm actually with you guys. So what I need for you to do is, again, think about that in the terms of who you are, how you do present yourself. Now, again, you need to think about this not in the context of school. You need to think about this in the context of the, of the working world, the business world out there. And, again, this can be aspirational. You may be saying to yourself right now, okay, the minute I leave Columbia College, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to cut off all my hair. I'm going to shave my beard. I'm going to, you know, I'm only going to wear white button-down shirts and, and docker pants, and, and I'm going to look like I'm a salesman for an insurance company. No, so, but are you the black T-shirt guy or are you the Armani suit guy? What I am looking for here is that how you need to consider in all of this your first impression, the first impression that you are going to make on someone. So what are those attributes? So again, you need to keep in mind also the clientele that you're going after because I can tell you right now, if Vogue really is on your radar, that is going to imply a very specific dress, a very specific kind of look for you to feel like you can really cultivate that. Does that sort of make sense? So again, a couple of the words that we can think about in this. Are you going to be business-like? Are you going to be corporate? Are you going to be casual? Are you avant-garde? Are you confident? Are you sophisticated? Are you fashionable? Are you trendy? Are you conservative? All of those kind of keywords are the kind of keywords that I'm looking for here. And again, this is not about the inside of you. This is about the outside of you. Are you edgy? Are you... You get where this is going, right? So again, five or six words. So I can say professional, not necessarily dress professional, but the way I come off as right? Exactly. But again, you, so maybe you're not the Armani suit kind of guy, you know, maybe you're the uh, um, uh, 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 hip hop street, but you're still realize that if, you know, when you say professional, that implies a certain level that you're going to go after. So you're not uh, afraid to actually go out and spend a thousand dollars on a pair of sneakers because the people who understand that culture would appreciate that that's ex what you are doing, what you're wearing, that kind of stuff, whatever. So again, it's not necessarily a, a specific quality about it as much as that that's, again, you're taking into account that target and how you're approaching them. So are you the hip hop guy who's spent $10,000 on his wardrobe? Are you the hip hop kid who spent not kid, hip hop photographer who spent, you know, 50 bucks. Um, that matters because that's going to, again, have a, uh, a who you're going to be able to go after, who you are, who you are, again, in your brand is going to have an impact on that. All right, so the five or six words, or again, really, really short phrases. Uh, but again, I think that that brings up a, a good point. You can be aspirational about this. This may not ex be exactly where you are right now, but you need to be realistic about this too. So um, anyway. Keep that in in mind.
All right, you guys good with that? Okay, we've got two more of these to go. So the next one is personality. And so for personality, where tone and expression was the exterior of you, tone, person, I mean, personality is the interior of you, P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-T-Y. So personality is the inside of you. It's the what. The, it's really sort of what you are like. The person who you know, sort of you on the inside. Um, um, how do you want people to know who you really are? So again, some of the catchwords that I would use to sort of include in the in in this area would be: Are you an introvert? Are you extrovert? Are you friendly? Are you quiet? Are you funny? Are you flexible? Are you quirky? Are you explosive? Um, are you hip? Are you razor smart? Those would be sort of, the, again, that is, this has got much less to do with sort of how you dress and present the outside of you as much as how you present the inside of you. So again, five or six words are really short phrases for that. You can also you be aspirational in this sense. Um, but again, don't start, don't be unrealistic about that. Try to keep this as sort of honest and close as you can to this. Now, another thing that you could do, because again, I would suggest even after tonight that you hang on to this exercise um, and possibly look through a couple of these word lists and see if you can refine it a little bit. I think also that some of this can be a conversation that you have with somebody that you really trust, a good friend of yours. So you, because again, somebody could say, okay, well, Versa, what do you like? And I could say, well, in my opinion, okay, here, I'll tell you what my list was. Um, I'll, I'll just read mine out for here. Oh, I should throw out my tone and expression was um, I'm consistent, I'm casually sophisticated, I'm confident, um, I, I'm, I have a very narrowly defined fashionable sense, um, and, I, uh, uh, and I dress as a person who would probably rather get on the floor uh, and I'm not afraid to roll around in the dirt. Um, because that's really the way I see my photography or the when I shoot. Uh, for my personality part of it, though, um, I put in uh, I'm extroverted, I'm thoughtful, I'm usually right, um, <laughs> uh, I'm smart, and I'm generous. So, but, and this again is why I ask you to hang on to this thing and talk to uh, somebody, your friends that you really trust, and say, is that how you see me? Do you see me as generous? Maybe I, maybe that's just in my mind, and that's not really the way I come off. Because the closer and the more honest and legitimate you can get these lists, the easier it is going to be to use this to actually determine and to define your brand. I wanted to put down hip, but I think hip has a definite age, age limitation. Okay, that works. Actually, I never thought of myself as hip. But you just can't tell anybody that? Yeah. Okay. All right, are you guys feeling pretty good about that? Okay. Um, so then the last one, and this in many ways is the most difficult one. The last one I'm going to call distinguishing value. So I, I can't even spell distinguishing, but that's what I'm going to call it. So distinguishing values. And what I'm looking for here, again, it's going to be that five or six words or incredibly short phrases. But what I'm looking for here would be um, what defines you? What can you deliver in, uh, in, in your business? What, um, uh, what can you bring to this that is special, that is unique? And you remember, this is part of the conversation we had on the very first class. When I said to you guys, you really sort of need to be looking for, are really able to define your niche, your, whatever it is that you can do that nobody else can do. And this becomes a daunting task to try to do. So there, uh, again, and that's, that's maybe not something that you're going to be able to complete tonight in the five minutes that I'm going to ask you to do this in. Um, but 
The easiest way I think to actually go about doing this, if you don't really have a solid one that you can say, okay, well, this is what I can do that no one else can do, is look out at the work. Look at your competition specifically. Look at what they do first. So again, if you're aspiring to be a fashion photographer and you want to shoot high in New York, you take a look at what those people can do and what they do. Do they have their own studios? Do they have, um, you know, these amazing? Do they have just this amazing eye or connection? Can they? Are they an incredible storyteller? What is it about them? You look at that, and you accept that all of the things that you can decipher about them are things that you are going to have to do as well. So that's not necessarily what your niche is. What your niche is, is that you've got to find where's the gap in that? Where is the thing that's not being satisfied in all of that? And is that something that you can then bring to the party? Does that sort of make sense? Daniel? Oh, they, they have to have overlap. Of course, of course. But again, I'm trying to get this exercise planted in you guys right now with the hopes that this is going to stay with you for a while to help develop this part. Because I think once you see how this ultimately gets pulled together, um, you, it, it'll help, it, it brings a sort of full circle and then the mechanics of it you can refine and that's something I would really strongly suggest that you guys do. So a lot of it is just about sort of introspecting and thought and that kind of stuff. So at any rate, uh, but so the other thing, <clears throat> so it is the things that could be possible in this is the way you work, the product that you deliver. It's not always about the product that you deliver only. It's not only that it's not that you become um, the underwater fashion photographer. That's not necessarily what it has to be. Um, it can be the way that you ultimately work. You know, you can be the fastest shooter that there is. So everybody else is doing their 20 shots a day. You can do 320 a day. Is that what you bring to the party? There's a lot of value in that. There's people who would suck that up. I can promise you that. I don't know that you'd want to work that way, but, but you get where I'm going for here. So again, to help you establish this part even better, you can go back and look at that core part. Again, this very underlying value part that we were talking about, the core part there, because those are things that you were listing that you felt like everybody in your industry had to have. So in looking at that list, do you see things that possibly – um, are not necessarily on that list that wouldn't be common to everybody that you could then exploit as a sort of a niche uh, uh, um, uh, 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 approach for you uh, in your work. Um, so again, struggling. this is the hardest part, uh, I, I think, of the questions that I'm going to actually ask you guys to do. Um, but the last thing that you can do to try to help you figure this part out is what we are looking for in this group right now is that why on earth would a client hire you over someone else? So let's say all of us in this class right now are bidding on a job. We're all going to bid on the exact same job, right? Why would the client pick any one of you? What can you offer them that I can't or that Gabby can't or that Heather can't or Daniel can't? What can you offer them? That's what I'm really trying to find in this group. So again, this is the hardest one. I don't know that you can really blow through a whole lot of things right now to actually come up with. This is something that's going to take a little bit more thought. But again, the mechanics and the structure that we're going to put together for this exercise are still going to be available to you. You're still going to have them uh, um, um, uh, tomorrow, the next day, next week, next year um, to be able to go in and to uh, continue to sort of refine um, if that would make sense. Okay, so for mine... In my distinguishing values, I put in uh, the ability to go into any situation and being shooting quickly, which sort of goes back to the, that's not the 320 shot a day guy, but it is somebody who can be up and shooting fast, and that's really important to a whole lot of people. Um, uh, and, but with the desired look that they're going for, um, I can also do compositing, which allows for uh, non-real worlds to exist. Um, I'm a master lighting technician. I am very clever at problem solving. Those are things that I can bring to it that maybe you guys can't. If we were talking about, again, how I would be pitting myself against you is can they, can they get a set going as fast as I can? No, I can get it going quicker than they can, and therefore we can get more done in a day than they can. Is that worth it to you? Well, sure. Make sense? Okay. So how are you guys feeling about this list? So you've got your four lists. Kind of good about that. One of them may be a little bit weaker than the other, but that's okay. So then, on a brand new piece of paper, this one I am going to do up here. 
I need you to take the entire piece of paper and just put a large X right down the middle of it so that it looks kind of like this. No, it looks just like this. <coughs> And at the very top up here, I want you to write the word soft. And at the bottom, I want you to write the word hard. On the uh, left-hand side over here, I want you to write warm. And on the right side over here, cold. <clears throat> you good on that? OK. So in this context that we've got right here, I need you to take every single one of those words that you put in those four lists, and they need to find a place somewhere on this chart. So what do I mean by that? So just let me go through a couple of these guys with you really quickly. One of my things that I said that was an ability, of mine, and again, these are all now going to be lumped together. They're not separating out in terms of I need your all of your lists, all of the words that you did, and personality, core values, all of that kind of stuff, whatever, to find a place on this chart. So for me, I said, I'm a conversationalist. I, I, I can engage people in conversation. I can draw people out. I can speak to people. That's a, really, that's a trait that I have, right? So in my sense, that is something that is on the softer side of who I am, but also on the warmer side. That then becomes, so as a conversation, it actually, that term gets put up in this quadrant right here. So C-O-N-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N. Okay, so I am a conversationalist. Um, I'm generous. Is generous cold? No. Is generous hard? No. So again, generous is another thing that would be in this sort of soft and warm. So generous. So then I have smart. Where does smart fall? Say what? Oh, of course it is. In my opinion, that you're absolutely right. So smart is actually over here in the cold and harder version of it all. Um, uh, confident. Where's confident? Again, it's in the same place over here. So confident. So I need everybody to go through and take all of the words that you had listed here, and I want you to put them into your respective areas. I'm going to go ahead and do my chart up here for you guys to see, and then we can have a discussion about whether you think that I'm really uh, uh, that this part was right or not.
Oh, sure. There's And again, there are going to be things that conceivably there's something you could have come up with that would land right in the middle of all this. It's n it's not hot or cold. It's not warmer. It's just it, it lands right in the middle. It's that sort of ambiguous. <clears throat> I have a friend who bought a pair of sneakers in a secret sneaker shop in New York for ten thousand dollars. He literally walked up to a door. That was it. There was no window, no sign, no nothing. Knock on. I don't think he had to put in a secret code, but somebody had told him about it. Exactly right. Knock once. Wait ten seconds. Knock three times. And, and no, it wasn't that bad. But anyway, uh, he knocked on it and walked in, and he said it was like a museum. He said very small museum, but a museum nonetheless. And and I guess there was a ah moment of some light shining down on this. But he has a lot of money. Oh, no, he wouldn't even consider wearing these. But he's got, I don't know, two, three hundred pairs of shoes. I mean, it's he's he's a little, it's his, his hobby. Yeah, sneakers is his thing. Say what? But he actually wears really expensive ones, too. So he, he'll wear, like... Exactly, but he will wear his twenty five hundred dollar Pradas. Uh, is he the type to buy him shoes? Say what? Is he the type to buy him shoes? I don't know. Uh, That's a great like, question. He has some for like conserving and uh -huh. he wants to resell and right. ones he can wear like fun. I'm gonna ask him that, I'll let you know. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so are you guys pretty good? Are we pretty well finished, done on this, guys? Okay, so what I would like to do before we continue this, um, and we're going to sort of, go to sort of go around the room, is there are things that we can add to this chart right now that do not necessarily have to do with you specifically, but that we could actually term in, that we can phrase or at least allocate to this. So if I was going to pick a kind of type, let's say um, sans serif, Right? Does everybody know the difference in serif and sans serif type? Does anybody not know that difference? Like one's like circular and one's like hard, if you take a look, serifs tend to be things like, um, if I was going to do the letter T, that would be a sans serif type, but the letter T with serifs would be more like this. They would drop these little things off of them. Those little things off of them are the serifs. San is French for without, so sans serif is the more hardcore. It's like Helvetica is a sans serif type. Okay, so would you think that, again, sans serif is, is where on this chart? Exactly. It's going to be down in this group down in here, right? And then where is serif type? Type that does have serifs. Probably kind of the opposite part, probably more up in this group up in here. So this would be the serif types. S -E -R -I -F. Um, what about color? Where are grays? In the middle. In the middle, really? No, you think drawing. that? No, they're, they're in the color. I am going, okay, let's, let's, let's look at two different versions. I'll say if I had to say grays as opposed to pastels. Where would you put those? Where would you put pastels? So now pastels can be, you can have blues, which some people would say were cold. But for me, I would say more saturated colors tend to fall in that. I would put all of pastels seem soft to me. Um, so the pastel part would sort of like run the gamut over here. So we'll do pastels across. Okay, and so the sort of the more yellows and, and the warmer colors would be up here. So this would be the warm pastels would be up here. And the cold pastels would be down here. But for me, the silvers, the metallic grays, the neutral grays, all of that kind of stuff is going to be probably over in this group over in here. And I'm not going to put it up in the softer part because I don't see it up there. I see it pretty much down in this grouping down in here. So this is where I'm going to put the grays, the metallics.
phrase, that kind of stuff. Um, where would scripted font go? You know, like cursive. It would certainly be soft, right? Would you say it's warm, probably? Okay, I've got a warm and a cold, so why don't we just put it right on the bridge right here? So we'll just do script. Because it's conceivable. You could find one that's, um, depending on how the cursive part works, that's pushing itself in a little bit harder direction or a little bit, in our case, colder direction, and one that uh, pushes it in a little bit warmer direction, you know, depending on how that, how how specific or how that whole part goes. So let's pick some primary colors. Where's red? Cold and hard. Red? Okay, so I'm going to put red over here, but then where's blue? So the thing that I'm trying to do here is begin to attach stuff. So when you guys look, and I would just like to go around the room, we don't need to be too revealing about this, but if you were, if you take a look at my list up right here, where do you see the dominant part of what I've actually filled in on this? Cold and hard. In is that how you is that is that how I see my work? Is that how I see my brand? And it is. It's very cold and very hard. It's very precise. It's terms like that. That's what I would use to define my brand. That's and it again, it's where the majority of what I consider to be the attributes that describe me, that are important about me, all of those things, where do they fall? So, just out of curiosity, if you don't want to tell me where you landed, you don't have to. I feel like I'm crying. I feel no, I really do. I feel like okay. And send me a picture of yourself naked and tell me what brand. You, no, anyway. Um, yeah, right. Um, so, Jared, where do you find you? Where was the majority of you? What quadrant? Cold and hard, Carly. Mine was like on the left side, mostly on the top. So up in here. Okay, so soft and warm. And a couple down. Okay, but the majority. Where I'm looking for is the line share. Is up in here. Is this area right up in here? Okay, Joe. The cold uh, up in the softer side up in here or the harder side down here? Split. Split between this. So you're in the so you're sort of like uh, crossing this line right here. I thought it was supposed to be a comparison, but yeah, like they're the like Okay. 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 Savannah, where did you end up in all of this? Okay, so Savannah's up in here in warm and soft. Peyton, where where did you end up? Okay, so you're like kind of Joe in here. You populate this. You feel like it's pretty even over in there? Yeah. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Tyler, where were you? So I was pretty much hard. Um, I only had like one more in the. Only one more in the warm and then cold. Okay, so you're bridging this part down in here. Yeah. Interesting. Kiana, where did you end up? Uh, so half, wait, half up here and then half down here. This has happened to me before because that no, it's a really interesting mix, and I think that in some ways, don't let that disturb you. That and, and I know I think in my case, it's just it was really it's readily apparent to me. I know exactly where I am. That it just landed. It I can everything I can come up with just dominates and goes into this area. But the idea that you're split between these to me is a um, uh, um, a marketing opportunity. It's an uh, it's sort of like a duality that you could actually play. But again, I think that the construct of this helps give that to you, helps say, okay, there's this duality that's going on here, and I can play both of these games. And so, um, I, I, again, I think that that's a strength, not necessarily a weakness. So, Elizabeth, where did you end up? Where are you dominant? Um, warm side, just hard, warm Okay, but mostly hard, warm side? Okay, so in here, right in here? Okay, that's fine. So? Okay, that's fine. That's fine, Aaron. Okay, so you're kind of all in this area up in here? I'm oh, I'm sorry, this area in here? Yeah. Okay, okay. E? Bottom half. Bottom half. So again, split between these two? Good. Gabby? Yeah, bottom Same. Okay, bottom left or bottom half? Bottom half. Like yeah, yeah, you're pretty split across that. Good. Tony? Same with Kiana. Oh, okay. In interesting. Good. Daniel? The whole right half. The whole right half. This guy over here? Again, what I'm looking for is if there's a thing that really tends to point to a trend, a dominant. Okay, so no, again, so own it. Don't worry about it. Okay, no, if this is, so I wouldn't want you to think that cold and hard are negative things. They're not negative things at all. 
you know, I mean, oh, he's this really cold, hard, calculated, whatever. That's okay. It's, you know, as, as opposed to, oh, she's really warm and fuzzy and soft, and that, which is also okay. But, you know, because there are different clients that are going to be looking for different ones of these responses. If you're going to, I would guess if you're going to shoot babies for Hallmark, they're going to not want this really cold, hard person. You know, they're probably going to want somebody who's a little bit more on the softer, warmer side of it all. It doesn't have to be, but that would just be my guess, right? But, um, you know, if you're going to do, um, you know, bleeding edge architecture, helicopter, aerial work, you know, I don't know that that's going to be warm and soft as much as that might be. You know, so it's okay, I guess is all I'm saying. Peyton, did you have a question? Yeah, like some of the, like I'm looking at like terms on my like, uh, little like quadrants and like some of them can be like, be the same like interchangeable. Like, I get that. I get that. I get that. So again... What I'm asking you guys is to look at the construct that we've got going on now. Continue to work on this. We've got, you know, we're doing this in 20 minutes in some class at night. That is not ultimately, you know, this work should go on a little bit more for you. Again, I would strongly suggest that you start looking through those lists for terms that you feel like do apply to you. And then where do they fall in this? And fill this out a little bit more. But again, I also think it's really, really, really critical that you think about the clients that you ultimately want to shoot for. And what are they going to respond to? So again, if you're looking to do baby card you know, pictures for Hallmark, which can be incredibly lucrative for all I know. Um, and you are really populated down in the cold, hard part there. I think that you have got to be rethinking a little bit about uh, your branding or how you're presenting yourself. Some of those things are going to have to be warmed up and softened up. That you're going to have to think about that. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Heather, where were you going to be at? I I'm dying to know because those. Oh, anyway, no. <laughs> no. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So no, I'm just trying to think of. I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of your work, and it's like okay, yeah, I get that. I do. No, I do. No, 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 I do. No, I do because you no. Know, if you think about if you guys know Heather's work at all, if you think about like a lot of the lighting stuff, there's and and the the food that whole part of whatever tends to be very inviting and very warm, but you're also extremely precise about how you actually do the layouts and the construction of your stuff. It's it's very there. It's 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 not. It, it tends to be there's a lot of sort of regiment to it or not. I'm, and it, that's a good thing. I mean, I think it makes for really interesting photographs. But so that makes sense to me. Good. Okay. And Lothorian, where are you at in this? I'm split. I'm top left, bottom right. Wow. A top. So I've got three people that are top left, bottom right. I have no help for you guys at all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding at all. Okay. So go ahead. Oh, a absolutely. No, I, that's what I said earlier here in the beginning. I would say I would definitely think about showing this list, your list and the construct here and say, does this seem like me? Do you see these terms? Can you embellish on this? Whatever. Because again, it's important that, I mean, all of these are observations about yourself right now. That's a skewed thing at best, mm -hmm. you know, to have some, some sort of uh, external input into this whole list making, whatever I think would be absolutely critical, absolutely critical. Um, so yeah, I would definitely do that. But the point that I'm coming to right now or that I'm trying to actually sort of bring into this and we'll get through just the last little bit of this guys uh, and then we'll take a break tonight um, is the whole attachment that we've actually drawn in and started to bring other things in here. So in terms of now thinking when I, we're, we'll do this based on me right now in terms of thinking this about when I go to lay out my website, what is the color palette of my website going to be? Well, I am dominant here in cold and hard, so it needs to be a color palette that deals with that. What typeface am I going to use? It also is dictated by this. What icon am I going to use on my stationery? It is dictated by this. How, what font am I going to use on my stationery? It's also dictated by this. Everything that I ultimately do, the, the way that I do my business cards is going to be dictated by this. All of the things that I do in my life are going to be dictated by this. And if I'm true to that, then that is my brand. That is ultimately what my brand then becomes. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So the advantage of doing this thing is that it at least helps give you some direction about all of the decisions that you need to make about building your brand. 
you know, what is your portfolio going to look like? The cover of your portfolio, hard and cold. What does that mean? Well, it means I'm not going to do some burlap cloth bound portfolio. It's going to be black leather or maybe metal, maybe etched. I don't know. That's that, but that's where I'm going, right? Is it going to be, you know, I mean, you get where this is, all this is happening, right? This helps give you direction and consistency. And if there's anything to be said about branding, that is ultimately what you are looking for. But it's everything. It's every possible decision that you could make about this. We're going to talk a little bit more about that just in a second. But it drives everything. It's how you actually design and set up your blog. The appearance that that has has got to reflect where you landed in all of this. So for the people who landed in this duality, that really is sort of becomes this yin-yang sort of interesting possible place to play. But I don't know that you necessarily would have thought about it in that context before. Do you really present this sort of warmer, softer, harder, colder side that's that 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 you know does that somehow complement each other does that is that in conflict with each other does that is that conflict a positive thing is the complementing a positive thing is it um uh, is it all about balance yes i'm you know because there's a lot of things that you'll see that have balance that are beautifully integrated you know but then that becomes how you actually have to approach everything that you do sort of makes sense okay so um anyway Say what? Um, so the sans serif part for me, again, the way I look at that stuff, again, it tends to be a little bit of a, it's a harder typeface. There's no question about that. So I maybe would put it, yeah, right in the middle. I don't know that it really, the serif itself is necessarily a warm or a cold thing. You know, again, depending on the color that I put on it, maybe I can make it a warmer but still hard or a cooler, still hard sort of like approach to it. Yeah, that's Helvetica, right? Yes. So. Well, Helvetica would be one of them. There's a million of them. Ariel is another sans serif one that a lot of people <laughs> use. Things like Times New Roman or all the times when those are all serif fonts. Um, serif fonts tend to be easier to read, so if that matters, a lot of text. Um, that's why you will never, for the most part, pick up a book or a magazine for that matter, or a newspaper that has got that has got that is all written in sans serif. It becomes impossible to read. What the serifs actually do for, and I don't, I'm sure that there's all sorts of optical science behind this, but they actually make the words easier to read. So that's why they do them. Um, okay, so again, hopefully that that this part will help sort of again begin begin to give you guys some direction about how this whole thing goes. I'm going to give you a quick list right now and then we will take a break, but I want to get through the last part of this a quick list because it's still um, sort of continuing about, it's kind of the last part that we're going to talk about in branding here. And then if you have any questions about that, we can sort of go over uh, that part as well. So when you are looking to actually do your branding, the first place that you should probably start with, I think this is a good place to begin with, but then I think that you also, there are other things that you can do to sort of help you figure out exactly how it is that you should be presenting yourself. So with that, I'm going to ask you to start at the at sort of the beginning. Um, so the first thing is going to be to look at your previous work. So again, this should be a relatively good checklist for you guys, so you might consider writing this part down. But if you were <clears throat> go through all of your past work, and again, you want to call the images that um, that you think represent the work that not only just that you're doing, but the kind of work that you really want to do, you need to make a distinction between the images that you love and the images that you actually want to continue to make and for who the people that you want to make them for. So I may have some great portrait of somebody that I absolutely adore, but if it doesn't have anything to do with my branding, the fact is that no matter how much I love that picture, I can't use that because that sends a conflicting, confusing message. If all of a sudden people are looking through my book and there's this sort of hard-edged, cold, calculated fashion, somewhat sexual in nature, and then all of a sudden I end up with this like, I don't know, real warm, beautiful portrait, girl in Ireland. I don't know. I, whatever. I mean, you know, it just sends a mixed message, and that is not going to reflect well on your brand. That's, again, that's sending the confusion in there. So 
This goes back again. I've said it a thousand times before. The second thing on your list is to provide something different. So in your branding, what you are trying to do, desperately trying to find, again, is that niche, that thing that you can offer that nobody else can. Now, when I say nobody else can, that's a little strong. What I would say is that it's something that in your current market, in the place that you're working, whatever, that nobody is offering up. That may mean that, that doesn't necessarily mean that somebody in Nepal isn't doing that same kind of work. It just means that you are in this market right now, you're in the Chicago market, or you're in the New York market, or you're in the LA market, or wherever, Miami market, wherever you are, that there is nobody really doing that kind of work in that market right now. And that, again, is an avenue for you to exploit. Um, so the next thing on the list is that your branding should evoke a feeling. So again, is your branding, you know, this goes back to these catchwords, but what I'm going to ask you to do in all of this, just as a quick note on this, is write down again, and this will come in large part from this beginning work that you've done right here, write down the 10 to 30 words, I mean 20 to 30 words that best describe your service, your specialty, your personality, all these words right here. I want you to guys to take this list and then I want you to cut it in half. What are the 10 that you can take out of this? And then I want you to cut that list in half again. I want to know at the very end of it all, what are the five words that you need that are the most important from this whole big list that you absolutely have to have to, to, that you could not let go of? Like, so for instance, for me, um, uh, copy trend. That's one of the things that I can do, but that's nowhere near as important as my self-motivation. So again, whittle that list down. This will actually help you again uh, do this part here. The next part that we're going to talk about, again, is you need to consider developing a strong name, a strong logo, and a strong aesthetic. Now, there are people who are really good at doing all of this work themselves. Like I know some of you guys in here are graphic designers and you do that. If you are not good at this stuff, you need to hire somebody who is. Do not Try to make up for lack of funds, whatever, for bad work, um, because it's a, it, it's just a disservice to you. So just don't go down that road. Um, you can barter. You can get into a relationship with some graphic designer here and say, I will shoot all of your work for six months if you can help me build a logo and uh, a, an aesthetic for. But this is what you need to give them to actually articulate who you are. You cannot just go to a designer and say, make me look great. Unless they know you really, really well. But again, I would not even trust it even if they were your best friend. I would say you have got to go through this to have that conversation and say to them, okay, in my case, I really see myself as hard and cold, and that is the brand that I'm trying to go for. That is the aesthetic that I want to develop. So I need a logo that represents hard and cold. I need a logo that's actually going to do that. I need the aesthetic of everything that I do, my website, my everything, to reflect exactly this. That's where I'm going with this. I need you to help me do that. Will you do that with me? Make sense? Uh, that was the fourth thing. Um, fifth thing on this is this was more specific to your website, so we'll get into that when we talk about website design in here in just a little bit. But in your website, the one opportunity you really have to present yourself to strangers is your about page. But your about page should reflect all of these issues right here. In my case, I don't know that I'm going to really go with a lot of generous, thoughtful, and warm here. Because what I'm really looking for them to focus on is the smart, cold, calculated, reproducible, sure thing person. Does that sort of make sense? So again, your about page should be reflecting exactly what you see is dominant in your trends here. Um, so then you need to, and this is a quick short list that I'm going to give you, but in terms of integrating your branding, where that has to go, the things that you need to consider are, number one, your website. Number two, any direct mail that you would do. Number three, your business cards. Number four, your print delivery. How you deliver your image files to a client has an enormous amount to say about who you are, what your business is. Your email signature. Cold calling, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Your promos and any e-newsletters that you actually might do. Your portfolio. Your personal email to clients. Your blog. Your social media all need to reflect all of this. Um, the smaller things that you could actually do when you think about getting into this, things that will be reflective of this as well, is the client list that you have. If you're a fine artist, the galleries that are representing you. 
So for instance, there are galleries here in Chicago that, again, only handle a certain level of person. Is that something that would be reflected in part of your brand? If it's not, then that would not necessarily be something that I would include on that. Does that make sense? So it's the things that you not only put in here, but it's also the things that you leave out. You don't want to put in here. If you're the really, you know, cold hip hop sort of want a street grunge, hardcore photographer, that's what you want to do. But you've had this great 10-year relationship with Cuddle Duds and you've shot every one of their um, baby Cuddle Dud uh, catalogs for the last. You maybe don't want to be putting that reference or that, just saying. Um, to that end, you need to clearly think about every time you go onto social media for anything that this becomes a player in this. It's what you post, it's how you post, it's the language that you use, it's what you avoid, what you don't do that's also what you are a part of and what you're not a part of, the tweet storms you're willing to get into and the ones that you avoid, at least with your real name on it. Um, so again, just sort of something to think about. Um, so it's important for you guys to consider in all of this what you don't include also makes a statement about who you are. So again, in your about page, if you are witty, that should be reflected in your about page. But if you're not funny, then that should also be reflected in your about page. Does that sort of make sense? All right. I want to be witty, and I'm just not. Um, okay. Uh, we're almost done here, guys. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. So. There's a list here, and on this list, again, a lot of this is drawn from the material I've asked, actually asked you guys to read, so you'll bump into this in other places as well. But um, go. the last thing I'm going to say about your branding here is to go really go above and beyond all of this. So this means in every single thing that you do. Again, we started off, part of this was that how you present yourself. So am I presenting myself as cold and hard to you guys in what I wear right now? And I would say no. To be honest with you, I don't necessarily think that jeans and Converse are cold and hard. That would be much more suit guy to me, right? Maybe no tie, but it would be skinny suit, dark, solids, no color in them. It would be more along those lines. That would be the, holder, uh, the more colder, harder presentation. Uh, and that, in many cases, when I go to client meetings, that's exactly how I go to those things. I don't shoot in those, but when the interactions that I've got when I'm on a portfolio review or I'm going in to talk about uh, looking at layouts or design or concepting or that kind of stuff, I wear a completely different uniform than I'm wearing right now. Because again, that has more to do with the brand that I, where I see myself in that. The final two things that I'm going to say to you in this, and then we'll take a break, guys, is be consistent. This is about every single thing that you do from now on, every single thing in your life. If, um, if it isn't in the, in the, in the, the confines of your bedroom with another consenting person and the doors closed and the windows shut down or whatever, if it's anything beyond that experience that would be open up to any more of a public than that, you need to consider your brand in every single thing that you actually do, everything that you do. So again, this was funny. This came up the other day, though, when we were talking about all my estimate, and I said, I, now my office is in my house. So do I put in my address apartment 4502 or do I put suite 4502? And again, which of those is reflecting my brand? It would be suite 4502, not apartment 4502. Apartment 4502 would be up here in the soft, warm area. Come, let's have tea. <laughs> right? Uh, and then finally, and this is the last thing here that I will say about all of this, is that, uh, and again, this is a little bit off topic, but nonetheless, it's on this list, so I'm just going to throw it out here, is that um, your brand isn't just measured by what you do on the front end, but it's also measured by what you do on the back end. So again, you need to follow through on all of these things, and they need to be done in a way that is consistent with your brand. So... I say this to everybody because I do believe this is true. There are so few people who actually write out anything anymore physically, like a card, a note card, a thank you card, or a, just an anything that's written. When you get those things, they're just shocking when you get them. So that is a really great thing to get you to stand apart. But how then do I draft those cards? What is the language that I use if I do send a thank you card? What is all of that kind of follow-up, again, is all going to be driven by my brand, right? So just something else to think about as far as that goes. Are there questions about this? So do you guys feel like after going through this, possibly not tonight, but over the course of, say, another month, 
that if you really stay with this, that you might be able to articulate the thing that I was asking you to articulate at the very beginning of this class? Does it feel like maybe you have a little bit possibly a better idea of then kind of the words, the adjectives, the things that should be sort of included in that brand statement? Um, some of them were actually very close to what I think has actually come out in here, but I would um, try to make the language itself reflect the, the brand. How is it, you know, are you a conversationalist? Well, a conversationalist to me, somebody who can really speak in that, I I'm not one of those people. I can speak that way, but I can't write that way. I really wish I could. Uh, Aaron Sorkum is a kind of person who can write conversation better than anybody I know. Um, so he would be, that would be very sort of warm and soft for me. That's not the way I, that I, it is the way I speak, but it's not the way I, I can't write that way. So, but again, that's okay because it's consistent with my brand. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. So hopefully you guys, this will help build that somewhat. Don't let this go. Don't leave this class and end this right now. You, uh, the lion's share of the work has already been started right now. And this will help answer so many of the questions that are going to come up. So it really is, when you're looking at your Squarespace, what template do I really pick? It better be one that reflects your brand. You know, do I use the black interface or the white interface or the pastel interface? Well, this is all those answers are determined here. Are we good with this? Are there any questions about this? Okay, guys, um, let's do, um, it's quarter tail, be back by eight, um, and we'll talk about uh, all the rest of this stuff.